Hi everyone, welcome to Learning with Lena. Today's video is going to be a bit of a long one, so make sure you listen up! A while ago I made a video of naming flags on a flag filter, and I named the flag from Israel. And I remember that someone commented on the video and said, no, that's not Israel, that's Palestine. And I was confused because I knew I was correct, but they were upset that I said Israel, and I have no idea why, until now. I thought it was really important to figure out how all this really started. And this is what I've learned so far. Believe it or not, this all started with Britain. During the First World War in 1917, Britain issued the Balfour Declaration. It was a promise from Britain to the Jewish people to help them establish a national home for them in Palestine. Initially, the Jewish people were only thought to make up 10% of the population in Palestine. But once Britain began to facilitate the immigration of the European Jewish people to Palestine between 1922 and 1935, the Jewish population went from 9% to 27% of the total population. And that's when the Palestinians realized that Britain was not going to be delivering them independence. They were delivering their country to other people. The Palestinians tried to fight back, but they were overpowered. The British forces were too strong, but Britain thought that dividing the land would solve the problem. But remember, the Palestinians were the majority in the country. 250,000 Palestinians were moved by force. Then in 1947, after 30 years of occupation, Britain decided that they no longer wanted to deal with Palestine, and they just left it to the UN. The UN marked off 55% of the country for a Jewish state, but they never exactly explained how it could be a Jewish state, when half of the people in the territory were Palestinian. After that, the Zionists knew they would have a stronger military and decide to take more territory than the UN awarded them. Things continued to get worse for Palestinians. And in 1987, the Palestinian militant group, Hamas, was founded. Which I think personally only happened because they thought that they had no other option but to fight back. And now this is not me condoling violence from Hamas. But people can only take so much before they're forced to take extreme action. Now Israel is saying that the goal of them bombing Palestine is to limit Hamas's ability to fight. But I no longer believe that this is about Israel defending themselves. It's about wiping out Palestinians because they want to and because they can. In plain English, this is genocide. The Palestinians use the word Nakba, which means catastrophe to describe what happened to them in 1948, when 700,000 Palestinians were permanently displaced and 500 Palestinian villages were destroyed. To me, it sounds like the Nakba never ended for them. What people need to understand is that human rights do not have boundaries. They do not stop at certain borders. A life is a life regardless of your color or religion. And I won't say race because that is not a real thing. Palestinians are being persecuted. They're taking basic human rights away from them. We should all have a problem with this. They're cutting off water and electricity to innocent children. There's no house, there's no water, there's no food, there's nothing. Am I going crazy? I don't know. I don't know anymore. Please. Oh my God. We're pleading, we're pleading and we're pleading. Stop this. Where are the people? Why are you gonna We don't know what's going to happen anymore. They're bombing hospitals and schools. you can't even call this a war when it isn't even a fair fight. Israel has one of the most powerful militaries and they're intentionally killing innocent people. And none of this is fair. And the last thing I want to say, isn't it interesting that we don't have enough money to fund the things that we desperately need in our country? Like feeding children, bettering our educational system, housing the homeless, providing affordable health care, or even paying people a livable wage. Oh, but there's always money to fund violence, right? Shame on the U.S. and all the other countries that are helping to fund this genocide. And if you need violence to enforce your ideas, then your ideas are worthless. How is a child trying to teach adults about humanity? Shouldn't it be the other way around? And I know that seeing so many atrocities makes people lose hope. But we can't. We all have to fight. From the river to the sea. Because if we don't, what kind of future will all of us kids have? 
What also needs to be made clear is that standing with Palestinians and condemning what the Israeli government is doing does not mean anti-Semitism. It's anti-Zionism. The Zionist movement is not a Jewish movement. And although, yes, anti-Semitism is real, that does not give the Jews the right to be the oppressor. We want a ceasefire. It is not the difference of religion which is causing this conflict. The state of Israel does not represent all Jews and certainly does not represent the Jewish religion. According to Jewish religion, all of this is criminal. All of this is forbidden. It is a true violation of Judaism. And still, those people who choose not to follow Judaism misuse that very same religion, justify all those crimes forbidden in Judaism. The root cause is this criminal occupation which is oppressing an entire people. We have to end this occupation in its entirety. If people will ask me my advice, the leaders of Israel should wake up tomorrow morning and step out of the Knesset and return the land back to indigenous population. I guarantee peace. Free Palestine.